So this documentary is for me really. I've kind of found that most artists have to be classified in some sort of way. Um, and I just want to know if that's necessary for them or for someone else's needs. Now, definitely, it's much more acceptable to be, to work in an interdisciplinary way and, um, you know, very exciting new areas are being opened up because of, you know, the pushing together and the merging of, of disciplines. You have to use language in some way to define what you do and what you're about. I think uh, you make what you make and it, it goes where it goes. I don't think it's, it's not something to get hung up on. An illustrator is, is someone that, yes, sort of prepares work for an audience. It's more of a commercial product, isn't it? You're, you're um, creating work for a particular audience. Fine art-based work, it's more about a more conceptual interpretation of that work. Um, it's more about paint with fine art yeah. than just line and sort of storyboard. There's, there's definitely like uh, categories for people and they come in very useful but I don't really think anyone should be sort of confined to what they do. I think it should be like freely open. It's Artist statements for instance seem to mean something clearly to somebody reading it, whereas a lot of fine art stuff seems to be up in the air. What are they taking? Are they on a different planet sort of thing? Um, I, I make work and that's how I can, it's part of my identity and that's okay. it, really. Um, and I stand at private views and drink wine. I work on the streets, um, but I also uh, work for galleries as well. Uh, basically painting letter forms and, and, and sell my art really, you know, at the same time. Well, I'm um, a painter mm -hmm. and I also do live art or performance. My background is in fashion, but I'm very interested in the interface of disciplines around the edges and how they impact um, on fashion. Uh, I'm not an artist, I'm a technical draftsman. I've done that since I left school. Uh, my work is as a designer, but that's with civil engineering rather than um, any, what you would call, artistic design. Um, well, my official job is graphic designer, so I'd, I'd say I'm a graphic designer or a graphic artist. Mm -hmm. I create visuals to communicate a message to audiences. I think sometimes um, illustration can be attached to something, to a text or something, but I don't think it has to be. I don't know, I'm not, and I, I haven't trained under a course called illustration. I guess kind of any view that I, I give as to the, these kind of distinctions would be partly prejudicial because uh, I don't think that I've uh, been educated under a certain banner. Um, I think there's a, a definite crossover right now really with illustration and fine art, yeah. massively actually, you know, and I, I think that illustration could actually do better in the fine art world than a lot of what we class as fine artists yeah. with, within paint really. I, I think there's a really big thing with uh, line based work and illustration, characters and stuff right into fine art and I think it's probably a strong point to get into fine art. Illustration is, is, is definitely right now. Uh, fine art has always been on the fifth floor, which is high up, and illustration, I don't even know what floor it's on. It's below fine art. <laughs> no, historically, in this building, it's it's been like that. That's how it was when I was here, and um, I always thought that that was quite symbolic in some way, and I think this building was built so that the fine art was on the top floor. And I think people who have been illustrators, in my experience, mm -hmm. they have a, one huge advantage and one huge disadvantage. The advantage that they have uh, is usually that they're able to um, be very pragmatic 
and focused on uh, a solution in the work that they're doing yeah. because they're used to working to a brief and so their process tends to be about working towards something very confidently. Uh, they don't normally, in my experience, have uh, their personal neuroses interfere or they don't see their neuroses as part of the process of the work. I think illustration generally has a purpose. You're either it's done as a commission, uh, say for books or printed means, uh, whereas art, in the fine art sense, tends to be done by people who want to express themselves, perhaps less commercial. But again, some artists produce more the work that is classed as illustrations simply by the style that they adopt, say ink drawings that are then given a wash rather than big dauby, acrylic-y oil things that don't look like anything in particular. I think fine artists probably do consider themselves at a different level because it's art for art's sake rather than um, say prostituting yourself to the print media to, to make a living. Fine art is seen as something which is potentially more conceptual, it's more about ideas, it's about the situation that that work is exhibited in, it's about different conversations about the viewer of the, of the art. Illustration is considered to be more of a commercial art form, to be more connected to perhaps um, working in, in sort of genres such as publishing, sort of um, book illustration, um, perhaps in a more um, sort of low-tech way with sort of zine um, illustration. Um, and so yes, I would say it's considered more of a commercially focused um, art form. I don't think there is, there is much of a difference. I'd say it's more of a, a tag and again, it's more of a tag for audiences to understand, you know, that this is fine art and, and this is illustration. I mean, if you look at like the descriptions of what each sort of style is um, in, a, in a dictionary or whatever, and, and it's it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Um, I think fine art's definitely got sort of more of an upper class air about it. An illustration is definitely more sort of like a maybe like a sort of working class. Definitely in my mind, anyway. I think illustration. I think like sort of like street art. The idea of the paintings, uh, they just follow the interviews. Uh, I've kind of done visual representation of what the different people have said. So this first one is uh, based around Ru uh, Ruth Callan's interview. As you can see, she's at the top of a building. Uh, she said, uh, fine art has always on, been on the fifth floor, uh, that she didn't know where the where his illustration was. She thought it was quite significant. That, um, that fine art was always on the top floor. Yeah, so as you can see, I have faces at the side there, and then the building kind of drips down. Some quotes around the outside that you can read some of. And then we um, then we come down to Dale's interview. Dale Collins. Uh, he said about working on the streets. So this one, following on from the top one, moves down to the bottom of the building. And as you can see, I never put like a kind of some kind of graffiti esque. Work on there's some street artwork on there, um, and some of his quotes around there as well. So you can see he said it's more paint with fine art rather than just line and storyboard. Um, yeah, I think that's got quite a, a street art kind of kind of look to it. And then this moves across, staying along on the street. Uh, this is Giles Headley's painting, responding to his interview. 
in his interview he said the illustrator, uh, some people think that illustrators prostitute themselves to the media sort of made him look like a prostitute yeah <laughs> as you can see the, the drips kind of run out through the work kind of link together like a, like a sort of storyboard and then there's the, the two paintings together uh, these are both based on Craig Barber's interview and he, he said about um, illustrators being attached to text so in this one on the, on the left you can see the, the large letter form which is kind of pushing away you can see his hand coming across there trying, trying to link these two trying to link these two together and yet again you can see uh, the, the interview itself and his responses to my questions and then the final one it's a picture representing myself. I've used my palette on this one, so it's kind of a culmination of all the different, all the other paintings put together. And I'm looking across at the rest of the story, show how I've kind of come to my conclusion from the journey. So lots of illustration, street art, and kind of painterly, fine art type of work, and all of it mixed together in, into the final image. Um, it's, it's an interesting one for me because I studied very traditionally in fine art in printmaking um, and right up until the kind of middle of my MA was making prints, etchings, quite traditional um, and since then my work is fairly unrecognisable as a printmaker. I definitely, I mean I, I see myself as someone who makes 3D collage but I feel very secure in the knowledge that I come from this really s solid foundation of printmaking and feel confident about using the materials I used in the workshop. Right, well, that's a really good question. Um, I would define myself as an artist. Full stop. Um, well, I suppose if I was to categorise what media I use, it's a combination of photography, painting, sculpture and film. Um, but I don't necessarily see myself as tied down to one particular media. Yeah. I find that very restricting. I, d I certainly don't think they need to be categorised. I think that it helps us maybe to organise information if we categorise artists. Yeah. But I don't think it's that applicable to modern contemporary practice mm -hmm. to be a sculptor or a painter. People like to look at the work and how successful the materials and the medium used conveys the ideas within the work or conveys the emotions within the work. I think it's, I think it's some ways a good thing, some ways a bad thing. I think that there is, of course, this kind of ongoing argument about the loss of skills, which I think is, you know, it's a valid argument. I'm, I'm very grateful for some of the small skills I have because of a traditional training in printmaking. There's some really fantastic collaborations come about because you have to go and seek the skills of a tra of a craftsman or um, somebody who really knows what they're doing and focuses on one particular medium. And in that sense, the artist, I suppose, has become someone who project manages, which is an interesting, an interesting shift. Yeah. I think it's a restriction. I think it holds you back. I started out painting, yeah. and I love painting, and I go back to painting quite a lot. You just have to follow your heart mm. and, and just go with the media and, and what, what feels right for you. Some people still have this idea that, oh, it has to be this or this, but I think it's restricting. It's, you know, what, what's the point in holding yourself back? I think that as time's kind of gone on and things like magazines and advertising campaigns and have become more and more sophisticated and commercial photography and fine art photography have become so blurred that I don't know where the kind of boundaries are really anymore and whether it matters but I suppose if you'd asked me to, if you asked me to give a really simple answer which I know is flawed and wrong I would say that illustration comes from perhaps a brief or a need to fulfil um, a set of questions or it's less investigation based the kind of thing that the open-endedness of fine art practices may be what kind of defines it. Yeah.